Hi, I'm Adam from EnglishAcon.com and in this video today we're going to look at the animation um, editor in Construct 2. So if I just open Construct 2 and I create a new empty project um, and then I double click I'm met by the new objects screen window. Now I think it's there's only a few of these which can use animations. If you haven't installed any other plugins I think it's only the sprite object which can which opens with an animation um, editing area if I'm not mistaken there may be another one but for the moment let's just assume it's just that I think it is only that so if I double click on sprite and then click somewhere on the white background I met with this now let's just draw a uh, an image in the middle now just like my other video with the image editor um, you have the image editor which is used to edit the images and then on the right you have two extra boxes one is animations and one is animations frames now I've just created this and it's going to save it in the first animation frame I can also right click and add a frame and now I've got a second frame now if I create a new animation here well actually I undo that and create it here and then right click down here and add another frame and then create a new animation there or new image there I've got three images which are three red blobs which change position in the sprite now these are animation frames and like most animations if you know anything about animations um, they would actually play one frame to another frame to another frame if you look to the left if you click on each frame you've got a variable called frame speed and frame speed, uh, which is default set to one, tells you how fast or how long each frame is held in respect to, and if you click on where it says default here, the overall speed. So at the moment, um, and just to explain a little bit more, you have the you have what's known as animations, and these are almost like folders, and the name. So this is called default. Let's call this Annie One for animation one. So in animation one I've now got these frames underneath here, these three frames they're associated with this animation. If I right click and click on add animation and call this Annie 2, now if I click on Annie 2 the frames disappear because there are no frames associated with Annie 2. With Annie 1 there are and there are options on the left hand side depending on which animation you select. So if I click on Annie 1 I can come over here and let's just go through these. We've got speed and if I click on that it tells you that the animation speed in animation frames per second this cannot be greater than the game frame rate which is usually 60. So at the moment it's set to 5 so there's 5 animation frames per second. Now we only have 3 animation frames so if I were to set this to 3 in one second all of these should be shown where the sprite is. So if I do that, if I click off that, it should save it, and if I press play or view layout, you can see the animation and it stops. Going back to this, double clicking on it, making sure I've clicked on any one, it's, the next option is loop. If I select this to yes, then once the frames have played and got to number two, it'll start again from the beginning and it will loop similar to this within the speed which is three frames per second. Now repeat count, you can repeat your animation how many times you want. So for example, it's only going to repeat once and or you can choose to repeat two. So for example, um, you may start it the, um, and it gets number two but you may only want to repeat it back to one so that it repeats between these two frames rather than back to the very beginning. So that's what repeat to means. It tells you, tells you which frame you're repeating your animation back to. Repeat count is the number of times it's repeated if it's not looping. So if I do this two, if I get rid of loop for the moment and then press cancel that, not cancel that, sorry, but close that to save it and then press play, it should repeat twice and then stop and that's correct. However, if I come back to this double click, if I, it doesn't matter what I put, put as repeat count if I change the loop to yes and click on the X to save it and press repeat. Now it should repeat constantly back to the first image. Now if I go back to Construct 2, double click on this which is currently looking like a Japanese flag there. It's not meant to but anyway double click on it. Come on, click on Annie 1, come over here 
ping pong, if I select yes as well, then the animation will go to two and then it will go back to, to zero, but it won't jump back like that, it would go back through one. So it would actually go up and down. It go back and forth, back and forth along the animation frame. So if we just watch that, when ping pong is selected, you notice it goes down, then up, down, then up, rather than before it go down and then repeat from the very beginning. So let's double click on this again, any one. So that's what these do. Um, now, if you set an animation speed of three, and then if we come down here, you see that there's another speed setting, as I mentioned before, this is frame speed. And the description is, this is the relative time to speed on this frame, one for normal, two for twice as long. So if I increase this to two, then whenever the fr second frame or this frame is played, then it will hold this frame for twice as long as normal. If I click up off and then press play, then this second part, it slows down in the middle, as you can see. And that just allows you to tweak animations um, when you need to. So you can select the frame and then you can change that. Now, with different frames, um, they have different collisions as well that you can keep. So in this first one, if I click on zero to make sure I've selected the first frame, come here to the left, so the collisions, I've got this nice collision. Now if I delete, select, then press delete to delete that, or right click and delete, I've got three collision um, uh, points to make a polygon, but the next frame has four again. And so I could edit that, and the next frame has three again. And so you can actually have separate polygon um, collisions for each one. So if I right click and guess polygon shape, next position right click, guess polygon shape, next one right click, guess polygon, sh polygon shape, it says I can't guess the polygon shape, you'll have to set them yourself. That could be because the image is fairly complicated. Yep, very complicated. But anyway, when, when I could guess it, you can see that it's following and tracking the ball. You wouldn't want this many polygons anyway, so I would suggest lowering them down. For a round shape, you'd probably have either four, like a square, um, or five, maybe, if you wanted it. Depends how it, you're expecting it to collide. So if it's colliding with the floor, and it's only going up and down. It may even just be four like that if the collisions are only here and on here. Um, also, you can have image points. So if I add image point here, then number two, the image point there, and then number three, the origin image point there. If I press close and play, you'll notice that it's jumping around quite strange. That's because the position of any sprite or anything is it's, it's recorded as being where its origin is. So you'll notice the origin is here and its position is 134, 134. If I move that so that this is over 0, 0, you see it becomes 0, 0. And in the second frame that origin is moved over here. So I would actually have to move this over here for its origin to be 0, 0 for the second frame, if you understand what I mean. So just be careful with origins. Normally you'd have them in the center and you can use the number pad keys uh, to change the position. Uh, if, if all the origins are in the same place, then you could use the animation as you view it um, in the image editor to create the animation. You can also add other image points. And you'll notice that even though I add three image points to this first frame, I haven't added them to the second frame, nor have I to the third frame. So if in the first frame you have other objects associated with the image point, it won't necessarily carry on through if the other frames are shown. But let's say, okay, let's say they all have one, I'm just going to delete these. They all have one extra image frame, so image frame number one, image frame, sorry, image point number one, and let's position this random places. And I save that and let's create another sprite. Let's put, change its size to 32 by 32 and oops, let's just have like a black circle with origin in the center. Let's go to the event sheet, right click, add event, double click on the system, every tick, add action, double click on the black sprite, set position to another object, choose the object, normal sprite, position. Uh, image point one, it's image point one, goes back to the layer, then press play. You'll notice that the black spot follows that 
image point in the animation. Um, so the image points here on the left, then at the top, and then on the right, it's doing that. But if one of the frames, for example, this way, if I remove the image point, um, so one of these doesn't have the image point yet in the event sheet, it's setting it to the image point. Let's see what happens. It goes to the origin instead. So that's something to be aware of. Okay, so going back into this, you'll notice also there's an animation two which we've created, and to do that you right click and you click on add animation. You can also right click and add a folder, and you can tuck these into, you click on the animation, you can tuck it into the folder that you want, there you go. Um, can I tuck it into the folder, there we go, you have to drag it into the folder, come on, there we go, so I've now got a folder within a folder and I can name those and I've got, I can name the animation. Um, that's just to help you to collect together the animation you want. Uh, but the animation name itself is important because if I just do, I don't know, let's just draw something crazy, a blue square in animation 2. So animation 1's got these red circles, animation 2's got these blue squares. It's just one, so there's no real animation there. Um, you'll notice that now it shows blue square first, and if I press play, it's just the blue square, it's not the red dot anymore. This is because, oops, sorry, this is because if I go, the first animation that's presented is animation 2. If I drag animation 1 into the, that fold at the top, come on, want to do it, oh, come on, I, there we go. If animation 1's at the top, um, come on, I'd like to dra drag this outside of the folder. You'd have to figure out how to do that. Can I right click? Uh, no. Um, Animation 2 now is below animation 1, so if I close that and press play, you'll see that it's actually the top animation again, which is shown first. But you can actually change the animation quite easily. So, for example, if I double click, go to system, then scroll down to on start layout, then say add action, then let's say after the, the layout has started, wait, um, wait just 2 minutes, well, not 21 seconds, 2 seconds, and then double click on this sprite and where is it set animation and I can't remember the name of the animation I think it was Annie 2 and I can set it to its beginning or the current frame that's being played I'm gonna set it to the beginning so after two seconds this should change to another animation so if we press play and we count one elephant two elephant bang there we go it's changed the uh, the other animation the importance of using named animations to help you to change animation because you may need to do that when you create your game so if you imagine somebody's got a certain type of armor, he collects a power up, now he's Mario firing fireballs, so you'd have to use another uh, set of animation sprites. Um, if you click on these animations, also you have some options. If you right click, you can duplicate them. You'd have to give them a new name, obviously. You can't have the same name with two. You can also preview them, and that just runs a preview. It'd be better if I preview this one here, preview, and you can see it. You can also right click, and you can delete them and you can rename them as we've shown before. Um, coming down here to the animation frame, so there's other things you can do. If you've actually got a sprite sheet, you can actually import frames from a sprite sheet. I don't actually have a sprite sheet as an example. Actually, I will show you one. I know how to do it. Okay, if I double click, go down to tile background there. Oh, sorry, that's the wrong one. Sorry, double click. Come on, double click, go down to tile map is what I meant to do. This has a default image, which I'm then going to save to my desktop. Say, I call this example, oh, keyboard, come on. Example, save, close that, um, and then I'm just gonna delete that. I don't need it in there. Then I'm gonna double click on this red sprite. Um, let's choose animation just animation to come down here right click import frames I'm going to import from sprite sheet I'm then going to select the image I've just saved which is example click on it I can then choose how many sections horizontal how many vertical cells there are click on OK and it will cut that image up into the the appropriate number I'll delete that first one and now I've got an animation in here from my sprite sheet Sprite sheets are a convenient way of storing information and they're the most uh, efficient way of storing information because they tend not to have as much empty space. Um, I can also right click in an import 
frames from file and if there were more than this I could select these so if I can control yep so I've just control copied a few of these now if I select three of them by clicking on one and then click on shift where the end one is it selects all the all of them in between or I click on one and hold down control and select all the uh, the images I want then click on open it will import all three of these at once into frames so that's another way that's how you import frames rather than simply loading them one by one from this load or open um, icon up there if I right click down here there are other things I can change the size of the thumb thumbnail to get better viewing options I can right click I can uh, reload files from the original for, um, source or from all animations if I changed the animations and by that I mean for example if I come to desktop if I were to change this but keep the name the same and keep the position the same in the same folder that I had designated in construct 2 i.e. I click on that chain um, sorry I click on yeah I think it's this one here click on the link to original files um, I could then reload them and it would reload the new image in there to help me with administrating the game. Um, I can also reverse the frames automatically in here which will reverse the animation in a way and I can do duplicate the last frame I have the option there to do that as well because you may want to do stop motion animation I can also add animation. Now as you saw before in the event sheet I can actually tell Construct 2 which animation I want to play I can also tell it which fr frame to play I can also tell it other things for example to set its speed also to start the animation to stop because some animations like explosions you may not want to start until a certain time period so you can do that I also have different conditions for example uh, where I'm checking like when the animations finished or when any of them are finished when the frame changes where the animation is playing and that's by name as well which animation um, what speed it is and which frame it's on so I have those other options and if I go to system, click go to system go to compare two values I can also look at the I can also get um, values of the animation frame, the frame cap, the frame name and compare those to different things as well so there's lots you can do uh, thank you very much for watching this video I hope it's helped you in some way uh, that's the basics of the animation editor I'm not sure whether it's called the animation editor officially but the animation aspect of the sprite uh, plugging stroke object in Construct 2. Now sprites are a very common thing and I may cover them again in more detail uh, in another place because they're one of the most common objects you'd include in your game because it, it it's the sort of the um, the main player as it were, the main things, that's, uh, the main icons and logos and everything there would be sprites as opposed to other objects. Anyway, thank you very much for watching this video. Uh, please view some of the other ones. Thank you.